Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am the Dean and Professor of Orthodontics at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today, we're talking about the second part of the couple to force ratio discussion. <music> If you remember from the previous session, we said that we don't need to change the point of application of the force, and just by adding simultaneously a couple to our system that produce a moment in opposite direction of the moment of the force, we can produce all type of tooth movement. That's the reason we called it couple to force ratio and not moment to force ratio. So to differentiate between the moment that produced by the couple from the moment that produced by the force. However, uh, we just talked about the third order view movement last time. Do we have the same relationship when we're talking about the first order and second order view? Let's look at that. If you remember from the subject of the couple, we can produce couple in all the three dimension. In third order view, we can produce that with the rectangular wire, However, in the first and second order view, we can produce that with round or rectangular wire. In third order view, we cannot produce couple with the round wire. What happens if we retract the canine on a round or rectangular wire? At the start, the force that applies to the canine is farther from the center of resistance. Therefore, it produces a moment, moment of the force that in this picture has been shown by blue arrow. This has a tendency, if you remember from the discussion of type of tooth movement, to produce uncontrolled tipping. However, because the bracket is sliding on the wire, very soon the wire will start to touch the corner of the bracket. Now, a couple will start to appear in the system because the wire doesn't want to bend and therefore it applies force on the corner of the bracket. At the start, this couple is a small. Therefore, the type of tooth movement that we had from uncontrolled tipping can change to controlled tipping. But as we progress in retracting the canine, the magnitude of these forces increase. And now from controlled tipping, we can go to translation or bodily movement. As soon as we reach to the bodily movement, the moment in the system cannot increase more. The tooth movement continues in this format until the canine reach to the premolar. Remember, the system cannot produce reaction moments bigger than what we applied, based on the third law of Newton. In another word, we cannot have root movement. We have uncontrolled tipping at the start, then control tipping, and then bodily movement, but not root movement. Now the tooth is touching the premolars. What happens if at this moment I remove my force? Because still the wire is active in the bracket, it will produce a moment in opposite direction. This moment appears as a force that can separate the canine from the premolar and open up the space. To prevent that, we can tie the canine to the adjacent teeth and now when the moment starts to appear, it will produce a force that causes root movement. But at the same time, it applies significant force on the posterior teeth that may cause anchorage loss. We will talk about anchorage in another session. Do we have the same system in the first order view? Yes. When we are applying a force on the canine in the first order view, force applies away from the center of resistance. Remember, center of resistance in the first order view is in occlusal, is almost in the center of occlusal plate. Therefore, a small moment appears in the system. This moment is a smaller than the moment that we have in the second order view. Therefore, at the start, again, we're going to have uncontrolled tipping, assuming the wire did not touch the bracket yet. But sooner or later, the bracket start to touch the wire in the corner and depends on the ligations that we have uh, there would be a couple in the system 
if we tie the canine to the wire very tightly, uh, this couple appear much faster. On the other hand, if we tie the uh, wire to the bracket loosely, this couple appears later on. Depends on how we tie the wire to the bracket, the type of tooth movement can be different. After uncontrolled tipping, a smart couple appear in the system and produce a control tipping for us. Very soon, the magnitude of the couple increase enough that can produce bodily movement. As you can see, couple to force ratio produce different type of tooth movement in different uh, views. I summarize uh, all the couple to force ratio possibilities in this table. And as you can see, in any of the views, if you are applying a force without any couple, means the couple to force ratio is zero, you will have uncontrolled tipping. If you are increasing your couple, that should be applied simultaneously. It is very important. It should apply simultaneously to produce that type of tooth movement. As we are increasing the amount of the couple, we walk toward control tipping. In this case, if you look at the ratio, the ratio is less than the distance between the force and the center of resistance that we call it D. Very soon, we reach to the stage that the amount of the moment that produced by the couple is equal to the amount of the moment that produced by the force, and therefore the ratio is equal to D. That's bodily movement occurs. When this ratio gets more than D, means that the moment that produced by the couple is bigger or larger than the moment that produced by the force, you will have root movement. If there is no force in the system, you have only couple, you will have pure rotation. In this case, we say ratio reached to the infinity. Thank you again for listening to another session of c channel. I'd like to take this opportunity and thank all the faculties and residents with their kind emails that uh, support this activity. Uh, if uh, you are uh, not get the chance to subscribe, please support us by subscribing to our channel. And if you are already subscribed, please press the like button to continue your support. Thank you again.